It's time for a little upgrade from my server's VM storage. So for running VMs, I want something that's a bit faster. And this is what I got. It's a used Samsung PM1725 3.2 terabyte drive. And I went for this guy for a couple of reasons. First thing, it's NVMe, so it's basically plug and play in every device. Next thing, it's an enterprise grade drive or data center with five writes, drive writes per day. So that means you basically can't kill it with writes. It's also fairly performant too, about a million IOPS, about six some gigabytes per second reads. It's about as good as you can get. And yeah, those are a few potential issues. Now, a few things about pricing. In 2020, I got this for about 260 bucks. So far from cheap, but actually quite reasonable pricing for NVMe drives. And if you look at it, you notice something interesting. Even though it is a PM1725 and it shows all the details, it shows F320 on it. And that's an interesting number because it's also the same number as some of the other Sun drives I have. So this is a Sun F20 I have here, for example. And these are these flash accelerators that are used to be used in Sun servers. I'm not exactly sure what they are, but they seem to have ended up on eBay for relatively cheap and often much cheaper than the standard version of the drive. So these are based off LSI warp drives. But these newer ones are just Samsung drives. And they basically perform. I haven't had any issues with these. And they're normally much cheaper than the traditional normal version. So I'm pretty happy with this pick. I've done a little bit of testing already. I've tried it in this dual 1366 server I have here. And I've tried it in an old Core 2 Duo. I don't have a PCIe Gen 3 system I can try it in right now. And they were getting about 3.4 gigabytes per second on Gen 2 with FIO and Linux. And I could get about 170,000 IOPS. Not bad, but I think it's still very limited by that system. It's going to be replacing two of these drives in RAID 1. Um, I couldn't convince myself to spend the money and use the slots for two of them. And just kind of said, hey, it's probably reliable enough that it's not an issue. And I can just use something like ZFS Send to send the full data set. So if something was to happen to this guy... I can restore from a backup quite easily to something like this um, in the future and just restore all the files. Um, the issue of having these, I've had these for about two years, and these are Micron 1100s. Um, they're pretty good drives. They're extremely good values. I think these are about $300 two years ago for the drives. But the issue I've had is the live is kind of running short because I've written a lot of data to these. So they say about 12% life remaining on my main ones. And they can probably get a good amount more, but I kind of want to save these for stuff like game drives where I'm less worried about endurance. And use this guy, which has basically unlimited endurance for server uses. Speed-wise, it's also a little bit limiting. I can fill it. And I get IOP limited on it as well. I'm also going to try using this as a swap drive. So I've played with swap drives on VMs. I'm using Proxmox. And it seems to help in my use case and let me get a little bit more VMs without killing performance if done on SSDs. Um, I don't want to put any more endurance on these guys, so I don't want to do that. This guy's endurance is fine. Performance should be fine to handle VMs and swap on both. I'm going to play with it though and see how it does. Now I'm going to get to the arguably more boring part of actually upgrading it. I'm just going to be slotting this in a slot. Cooling should be fine as a reasonable case overflow, but if it's not good enough, I'll just slap a fan on top of it. And that'll take care of any cooling issues that could come up. Um, and then I'm going to do some testing on that server. It should have Gen 3 because it is a E5 V2 system. So that will let me get the best performance out of this drive. Here is my complete mess of a server. It's a white box build that's been modded and stuff. And it barely works realistically at this point. Here is these Micron 2 1100 drives I was talking about. I got some hard drives for boot in here. And then I have a lot of just data drives all buried in there. And I got my new drive here, so it's going to just slit into one of these slots in the back. You probably can't see it. It's dark, and I don't want to fully pull this out of the rack if I don't have to. And I see it now as an NVMe drive. And now I see the NVMe device. The size looks correct. So it looks like the hardware has been detected and is working correctly. So now I can go and play with it all in the software. So now I'm going to do a little bit of initial FIO testing just to make sure everything's working right in this drive. Still working up to spec in this system. So I'm using FIOs, it allows you to do arbitrary IO testing of speeds, and I'm just using the raw device instead of a file system, which reduces a little bit of overhead. So right now I'm hitting eh, nearly a million IOPS. It does kind of settle down a little bit over time. 
and I'm also getting about 380 megs a second of 4K reads, which is pretty incredible for any drive. Um, it does have to take a lot of jobs, and you have to really bump up the queue depth. Um, if I reduce number of jobs, which is basically threads and IO depth to one, you get a single threaded, and then we're going to change it to random read. And with those changes, I can see that it falls down quite a bit to about 10,000 IOPS, which is not bad, but not incredible. And it definitely shows these high-end server-grade SSDs are built for when you really can bump up the queue depth. Which, running VMs might get it a little bit up there, but I don't have a best case. Um, a consumer-based drives these days definitely do better with these um, low queue depth workloads. The other thing to test is um, sequential speeds. So I'm going to just bump up the number of jobs up to like 4 now. IO depth, which is Q depth, up to 4. And we're going to just change block size to 1 meg. And change it back to just a sequential read. And this should be able to get the pretty much the peak sequential performance. And yeah, it's about that. We're getting about 5.6 gigabytes per second. It seems to be bouncing around a little bit. Um, I'm not sure. I think it does have a little bit of a peak from looking at other online reviews and it's starting to dip down. But I can get about 5.6 gigabytes per second, which at least tells me that it's running at its full speed um, PCI link. Because you do actually have to run this on a PCIe Gen 3 X8 link to get the full performance. Um, the other thing I wanted to look at in the smart data was to see um, temperatures under load. So I'm going to just look at those temperatures now and just see if it's been getting a little bit too hot. So if I go down, it's starting to get 68. So it does get a bit hotter under load. It is rated for 25 watts max, which kind of makes it so you can't use it in some potential workloads like desktops and stuff, or you're going to need an additional fan. And yeah, performance is dropping a little bit, but it's still not bad. Also, the other kind of incredible thing to me is I can read the whole drive in less than an hour it looks like, assuming it keeps this rate, or at least somewhat close to this rate, which is pretty incredible for a drive of 3.2 terabytes. You're definitely not doing that with any SATA SSD of that size or a hard drive. Now taking a look at write performance, these are not that spectacular in terms of write performance, mostly due to they not having an SLC cache and writing immediately to the TLC. Um, it's still getting 1700 megs a second. I can let it sit like this, but it's going to pretty much be a sustained kind of 1500 to 1700 megabytes per second sequential write. Not incredible, but definitely not bad. And I'd say it's getting in the top of the pack when it comes to sustained TLC writes. Very few TLC drives beat this. I think like the 980 Pro gets close. Um, or is a little bit better. But like the 970 Evos are worse and a lot of your standard drives would dip much lower than this. And that is something you get with these data center grade drives. They're designed to be pushed continuously at this sort of speed. Looking at the random writes though, and we go bump this um, block size down to 4K, change it to a random write on the whole drop, and then we're gonna just bump up the queue depth a lot because it gets the best performance out of these drives, especially server grade drives where they are designed for very high queue depths. And yeah, it's like 350,000 IOPS at random reads, which random right, which is not bad by any means, but far from as incredible as um, the read performance. This is what they generally consider to be a write optimized drive, so it's rated for five drive writes a day, which even with random writes, you can't even really hit that on this model, it seems like. But it's designed to be used in a fairly write, and that's why it's a 3.2 terabyte drive instead of a four, which are, would have enough NAND to be a four terabyte drive. And I think some later models like the PM1725B let you in the software change it to a four terabyte drive but it marks it as only being a one drive right per day disk in. now that the testing's out of the way i want to just add it to my zfs array and i've looked through quite a bit there's definitely potential options but i've kind of decided for my i rate the pros and cons this is going to be the best way for my use so i can just do sudo z pool attach um we're going to do the name of the pool, so that's SSD, the name of the drive one add such dev slash NVMe 0 and 1, and then another drive in the pool. So I can do sudo z pool list SSD to get all the um, drives, actually dash V, but I have one of these ATA micron drives in it. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it in here. Um, 
actually, I did an error because you have to put the drive you want to keep in there before, and then this the drive you want to add is after. So the total command z pool telling it to work with pools attach, which means add a drive to a mirror. SSD is the name of the pool. This is the drive I want it that's already in the pool I want to attach it to, and this is the drive that it's going to be adding. So I'm going to run it, and it's going to say that it has a crap DFI label because I've been using it for other things and it might overwrite partitions. That's fine. Giving dash F so it knows I can do that. And it's going to be finished. Now if I list dash V, I see it's added as an NVMe drive in the array. And if I look at IO stat, I can see that it's doing some writing right now on here. Um, it takes a little bit at the beginning, but it's going to be writing it all. It also does a scrub on the main array. Also looking at zpool status, I can see the full status of the array, and I can see that it has the three drives in the mirror. It says it's running a resliver and a rescan, so it's reslivered 4.56 gigs, um, half a percent done. It says it's going to take two hours to complete. It does normally start kind of slowly, so you have to give it a little bit of time for it to finish. Um, and then if I go to the next page, I can see zpool IO stat and see that these two are reading at about 250 megs a second. My new drive is writing at about 500 megs a second, and that all seems about right. So let's talk about performance I get in VMs. Um, I haven't run a super in-depth, but here's a crystal disk mark on it. It's fine. Now you see that one gigabyte per second is much less, and it looks like that's due to ZFS and how my configuration is set up with ZFS. Unfortunately, with at least minor tweaking, I haven't been able to get a major change in performance to get closer. I did a playing round with using LVM, and that will get me better performance on Proxmox with VMs. But I decided due to how my setup is configured, I'd rather have the flexibility and the ZFS features than the features of slightly better performance. So I'm going to stick with it. Um, just things otherwise is pretty snappy. Like... I, I don't know how to show I.O. performance, but if you're installing programs, it's reasonably fine. Installing VMs is pretty zippy. All the things I can be doing on here as well. And I'm pretty happy with the drive. One other thing I wanted to look at was write endurance. Um, so I've had this for a bit over a month and using it as my main write drive. The, another thing I wanted to look at was write endurance and how many writes and reads I'm putting on it. So I think looking at this, using it for about a month as my main VM server, I've put about a little over 10 tails of writes and a little over, seems like 20 tails of reads if I remember right. Which isn't that extraordinary, but also considering I've been super active with my VMs. So yeah, that, that'll definitely trash your standard consumer grade drives a lot faster than these guys where these 10 tails are dropping the bucket for this drive, seeing that it's rated for like over 20 petabytes of total writes. So I'm not worried. 60C it seems to be happily sitting at now, which is a bit higher than I would like, but I haven't put any fans on it. Not too worried about temperatures though. Otherwise, no issues, never had problems with it. Nothing, I've been using it for a month and really never seen any issues or anything I could say that was bad. Um, if I take a look at IO stat, which goes over usage, it seems to be showing errors. The percentage utilization seems to not be right as it'll go to 100%, and then it'll keep going, which seems wrong, but I can't confirm it. Um, but performance is great. VMs have been running not that much noticeably faster. You see a huge difference for my use, which is relatively light going from hard drives to SSDs, but you don't really see a big bump going from a higher end SATA SSD to a kind of higher end, but older NVMe drive. So yeah, overall pretty happy because I don't have those drives about to die now, and stay tuned for more kind of computery and random server stuff videos. Thanks. One other thing I wanted to look at was write endurance. Um, so I've had this for a bit over a month and using it as my main write drive. The another thing I wanted to look at was write endurance and how many writes and reads I'm putting on it. So I think looking at this, using it for about a month as my main VM server, I've put about little over 10 tails of writes and a little over seems like 20 tails of reads if I remember right which isn't that extraordinary but also considering I've been super active with my VMs so yeah that that'll definitely trash your standard consumer grade drives 
a lot faster than these guys where these 10 terras are dropping the bucket for this drive seeing that it's rated for like over 20 petabytes of total writes. So I'm not worried. 60C it seems to be happily sitting at now. It's a bit higher than I would like but I haven't put any fans on it. I'm not too worried about temperatures though. Otherwise no issues. Never had problems with it. Nothing. I've been using it for a month and really never seen any issues or anything I could say that was bad. Um, if I take a look at IO stat, which goes over usage, it seems to be showing errors. The percentage utilization seems to not be right as it'll go to 100% and then it'll keep going, which seems wrong, but I can't confirm it. Um, but performance is great. VMs have been running not that much noticeably faster. You see a huge difference for my use, which is relatively light going from hard drives to SSDs, but you don't really see a big bump going from a higher-end SATA SSD to a kind of higher-end but older NVMe drive, so eh. Overall, pretty happy because I don't have those drives about to die now, and stay tuned for more kind of computery and random server stuff videos. Thanks.